Hey guys, this is Michael at NWA3D, and today we're going to look at day two of the Introduction to Inventor lesson plan. And so here in this day, we're going to kind of work through the Inventor work environment, and we're going to look at how we utilize this area in order to create our objects or to create our 3D models. So remember that last time we went over the design process, and we also went over thinking of three-dimensional objects as two-dimensional so we could create sketches as traditional CAD programs work. So let's go ahead and take a look at Autodesk Inventor and first off we're going to see how to open a part file. And a, The part file is the main source of components that you will be using in order to create your objects or greater assemblies in order to use Inventor or print off an object. So we have a couple of ways to do that here on the start screen. And if you're not quite on the same screen as me, it is possible that you have a kind of grayed out area within here. And you can go ahead and click the X up here in the right hand corner, and it should bring you to the exact same screen. And in this screen, we have the selection here of a part file. And so if I chose this part file, it would load me into our environment, and it would be in inches. So I don't like inches a whole bunch, so I'm going to probably go a different route. So first off, we have up here in the top left, if I were to click on the application button, which is the big I in the corner, and then we can select a new, and then we can select part file, and it would almost automatically generate a part file, or we can also click here on the ribbon bar, click new, and then we can select what type of template we want, and I want to use the millimeter template just because that's what I like. So next, we're going to take a look at the work environment of Inventor. And so there's a lot of things on the screen now, but we can kind of talk through them part by part. So here on the right hand side, we have the navigation bar. And this navigation bar allows us to manipulate the areas. And we can move around basically everything in our document. So if I were to zoom in and out, you'll notice that the circle gets bigger and smaller. I can also orbit, as you notice that the cube is, or the circle and the cube in the top right hand corner will rotate around. I can also pan back and forth, or I can choose to rewind or go back through what I've already done. So you are welcome to use that if you would like, but a lot of these functions can be used just by using the mouse. So if I click in on the mouse wheel, it allows me to pan back and forth. If I hold the shift key and then click in on the mouse, it allows me to rotate. These are the main navigation or tools to manipulate the views that you'll be using. So let's take another look at how we can rotate the camera. And this one's a little bit more intuitive and it kind of helps you sort it into different areas. So here we have in the top right, it's called the view cube. And this view cube allows us to select different sides in order to see it from one single area as flat or otherwise. And so I can choose a corner and I can kind of see the top, front, and right of the cube, or I can choose just the front and see simply the front. And then you also have a home button to go back to the original destination that you loaded into the screen as. So we also have something down here. You'll notice that this will keep changing and it'll say ready or otherwise. And this is our status bar. So sometimes right here, you'll see a green loading bar and that's just telling you the memory usage that Inventor is taking up and how it's doing that. So these values can chain down here and it'll actually tell you what you're trying to attempt and what tools you have selected. Next, let's take a look at the ribbon tool or the ribbon selection menu. And so that's this big long bar that's all the way across the screen. And it has many, many different selections and there's many different ribbon tabs. So we have 3D model, sketch, inspect, tools, manage, view, environments, BIM, and so on. So many of these you will be using as we kind of step through this tutorial. And at this point, what we're going to do, we're gonna take a look at the application button and we'll come back to the ribbon when we start working with our environment. So here in the application button, you'll notice that we have the options to create a new, open a previous document, save or save as, as well as export and print different things. And so this is going to be your generalized file menu as most programs do have, and you can use that as you need. Next, we also wanna take a look at the browser, which is this, what I'm hovered over. This is the panel on the left-hand side, and this panel 
actually shows us all of the different parts that are included on our object right now. So all we have currently is an X, a YZ, an XZ, and an XY plane. And then we have the axes for those. And that's really the only things that we have within this document right now, because we haven't created a sketch or otherwise. Finally, there's the quick access toolbar here at the very top, and it allows you to do a couple quick functions, such as going back or undoing, saving, opening a new, and then also going to home views, such as this, and we can also browse back to our part here. So this small bracket right here is the navigation panel that allows you to change between what documents you currently have open. So let's go ahead and start our first sketch. So if we click here in the top left where the ribbon bar is, it should say 2D sketch. If it doesn't, select the down arrow and you should be able to see start 2D sketch. Once you select that value, you're gonna notice three different planes pop up. Just like I had told you earlier, there's a YZ, an XY, and an XZ. I'm going to choose the XZ plane so that I'm looking down the object from the top. So notice the view cube sits top here and I can actually rotate to the side in order to have that upright. And that's what I like to do. I'm going to click in on the mouse wheel in order to pan over my view. So I'm a little, have the origin offset here to the left. And next what I'm going to end up doing is I'm actually going to create a sketch. And so I'm going to use the line function in order to draw one inch or in millimeters, it's going to be 25.4. So I went ahead and typed in the numbers from my number pad and typed in 25.4 and clicked enter. And that automatically generates the necessary line. So you may have noticed I zoomed in and out there. That is by moving the scroll wheel back and forth. It allows you to zoom out or zoom in. So I like to use the scroll wheel and click in on it often, and I like to pan across and make sure my view is correct. So next I'm going to draw another 25.4 millimeter line straight up, or also one inch. So I'm going to again type in 25.4, but this time I'm going to hit tab, and it's going to actually select my other value. So notice that it's on 90 degrees, and that's exactly what I want it to be. I'm going to hit enter. And I can draw my next and final line. Okay, I'm going to draw that line at 25.4. Excuse me, it wasn't my final line. I have one more to draw in order to complete this square. So I'm going to again connect from here to the final point where I started, which is also 25.4 and 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the escape key so that I stop using the sketch line tool. Notice that here in the bottom left, it tells you select start of line and drag off endpoint for tangent arc. So we know that we're still using the line function. So if I hit escape, you'll notice that that disappears and it is really ready for any other input. So notice that dimensions automatically popped up for our objects and that's good telling us that this is one inch long or 25.4 millimeters. So now we have our created sketch and it's looking pretty nice and it's pretty simple, right? But a lot of things stem from this very simplicity that we're looking at here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and click on Finish Sketch. You have to always click Finish Sketch in order to get out of a mode or 3D model in any different way. So if I click Finish Sketch, we're going to be pulled back into a three-dimensional environment, which actually converts it to a side view, because remember this was from the top down. And so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm actually going to extrude this value. And so remember that I talked a little bit about extrude on day one, and what it does is it pulls that object out of the area. And so if I have a closed loop sketch just like this is, and it's fully constrained, then what I can do is I can extrude that object. So I'm going to click on the extrude button. and Notice it automatically generated a future view of what my cube may look like. So this isn't quite a cube. This would be a rectangular prism. So I'm going to make it one by typing in 25.4. That would make every single one of my sides equal, and then we would have an equal cube. So I'm going to click on the check mark there, and now it is loaded in. So if you notice here, I now have a perfect cube, and I can select the different views in order to view it in different ways. So most things do stem out of this basic cube function or creating rectangular prisms 
or maybe something a little bit more like that ellipsis I told you earlier. And so this is simple enough in order to do, but now it's your turn to recreate this cube. Once you finish recreating this cube in the same way, so remember you're going to create a 2D sketch, then you're going to draw one inch lines, and then you're going to extrude it one inch in order to create the object. Once you finish doing that, you are welcome to feel, to experience the different tools that there may be on Inventor and kind of go through changing manipulations. And you will be a little bit better at Inventor from just using the past experience and trying to find different things to use. So hopefully this was helpful and I will see you next time.